I think homebrewing has a fermentation problem. Before I tell you what it is, I need to emphasize that fermentation is an incredibly important part of brewing beer. During this process, yeast eat sugar and produce alcohol, which is arguably the thing that makes beer, beer. Yeast also produces a whole bunch of other flavor compounds that make beer taste the way it does. These flavors can be good, but they can also be bad. Long story short, it's often the fermentation process that will make or break a beer. Fermentation is also the most time intensive and delicate part of the brewing process. Everything needs to be just right for yeast to properly do their job. The environment needs to be clean and free of contaminants. The temperature needs to be dialed in and steady there needs to be adequate oxygen at the beginning of fermentation, but zero oxygen at the end. And the environment also needs to be dark to avoid damage from sunlight. So what's the problem? The problem is the fermenters themselves. Fancy stainless steel conical fermenters have been all the rage in the homebrewing community for the last few years. And I see the appeal. They're easy to clean, they're durable, they can be temp controlled, they block light. They also allow for pressurized, oxygen-free transfer. We currently only sell plastic fermentation buckets and our customers have been asking us to make a stainless steel fermenter for years, which we've been working on. But here's where the problem arose. Every time we sat down to discuss our fermenter ideas, we always came to the same conclusion. We weren't able to add all of the features into a conical fermenter that we think are truly necessary to make it appealing to all brewers, especially brewers who have limited space and limited funds. For example, we think a high quality fermenter needs to be made with food grade 304 stainless steel have the ability to be pressurized for full carbonation, offer an affordable temperature control solution, include the ability for upgrades such as a hop dropper or a pressurized spunding valve, and make efficient use of space and be cost effective or have dual uses. Stainless conicals check most but not all of these boxes. First, conicals are so tall they don't fit in a mini fridge or a chest freezer. This leaves an expensive glycol unit as the only temperature control option. Second, conical fermenters are a one-trick pony. When your conical isn't being used to ferment something, it's just taking up valuable space in your house or apartment or your garage. You can stack five or even 10 unused plastic buckets in the same amount of space that a single conical fermenter takes up. But start adding conicals to your collection and it gets out of hand really fast. So to solve these problems and design a single piece of equipment that checked more boxes, we listened to our customers and other seasoned brewers in the homebrew community. We also followed our intuition because we are brewers too. And where we landed was on a product that looks much less like a fermenter and a whole lot more like a keg. In fact, it's both. It's an all-in-one product that can be used for fermentation and serving beer. Like a lot of other brewers, we've been fermenting in kegs for years and they've proven to work pretty well. Uh, in some cases, a lot better than a basic plastic fermenter. However, the first limitation of a standard homebrew keg is the size. They hold just over five gallons of liquid, so it's not possible to ferment a full five gallon batch and leave adequate headspace to avoid a blowout. Second, it's very easy to clog a dip tube with hop debris, which means you may have a really hard time getting the finished product out of a standard keg unless you siphon it. And when you compare a regular keg to an actual conical, a lot of other features are missing as well. We solved this problem by creating an oversized six and a half gallon keg with a tri-clamp lid and a bunch of other ports for fittings. It's made with 304 stainless steel, has a large four inch tri-clamp opening on the top, is rated for up to 60 PSI for a quick carbonation, and has sturdy handles. It includes traditional gas and liquid posts and a standard pressure relief safety valve. 
It also has an additional port for a gas or liquid post. This will allow you to easily add a stone for nitro beers or to add a floating dip tube to have a backup in case a standard dip tube gets blocked. It also has a half inch NPT port that houses a 20 inch thermo well for precision temperature control in a large wine fridge or a chest freezer outfitted with a temp control unit. It includes an inch and a half tri-clamp opening that can be used for optional accessories such as a hop dropper, a sanitary spunding valve, or a blow-off tube. Finally, it can be outfitted with an insulation jacket to keep temperatures nice and steady during fermentation or to keep it cool when being used as a keg if you decide to take it to a party. And in our opinion, the absolute coolest feature of this product is that in some cases, you don't even have to transfer the beer from the keg after fermentation is finished. This means you can brew a beer, transfer it to a keg for fermentation, carbonate in the same vessel once it's finished, and then serve, all without ever transferring it to another container. According to the Brewing Elements book on yeast, the best place to store homebrew beer might actually be in the fermenter. This is for two reasons. First, skipping a transfer event reduces the likelihood of contamination. And second, yeast actually continues to clean up beer as it sits. A lot of breweries would tell you that you should never do this because of something called yeast autolysis. They say it will ruin your beer. That's when yeast die, break down, and release stuff that makes beer taste bad. However, according to Chris White, from the White Labs Yeast Company, this generally only happens under conditions of intense heat and extreme pressure or over a very long period of time at room temperature. He says that if beer is stored at serving temperature and under a reasonable amount of pressure, autolysis isn't something that needs to be worried about. And I wouldn't be saying this if we hadn't already done a bunch of experimentation on this. And nine times out of 10, serving beer right out of the same keg it was fermented in has produced amazing results. In fact, the only time this hasn't worked is when we dry hopped a really big IPA. Um, in those cases, the hops became overpowering because it sat in the beer too long, as you might expect. So you can't use it for that scenario. Our all-in-one keg fermenter will be pre-sale on our website until about the middle of the month, and then it will be live. So make sure to reserve one now because we have a limited amount and expect to sell out of our first run. And if you've ever successfully fermented beer and served it out of the same container without transferring, please make sure to respond to all the non-believers in the comment section. Check out another video if you like this one. Thanks for watching. Cheers.